Recently, I created an animation over on my Instagram. You should go see it if you haven't. I learned a lot making it, so I decided to do a little breakdown explaining everything that went into it. Okay, three, two, one, it's jam. I don't know if you can tell, but if you look really close, that turret actually came from a cylinder. I started with the cylinder and added some bits and bob, making joints and other stuff until I thought it looked good. And then I didn't record that part, so you can just, just look at the finished model. So now that we have a turret, we have to make it look realistic and not boring. So I use this system of nodes to make a rust texture. Essentially, it's just noise going into the bump, which makes it look bumpy. And then the same noise controlling what color goes where, which makes it look funky. And some noise to the normal metal just to add some fun light interaction. Finally, I gave it some specular and roughness, which essentially just dictates what parts are shiny and what parts aren't. And then for some added realism, I unwrapped the model. Just imagine taking a cube and laying it out so all six sides would show. Blender can do this all automatically and gave me this mess of faces, but it's fine. Now that I have the unwrapped model, I can start baking ambient occlusion. While that's baking, why don't I explain what ambient occlusion is? In 3D computer graphics, modeling, and animation, ambient occlusion is a shading and rendering technique used to calculate how exposed each point in a scene is to ambient lighting. For example, the interior of a tube is typically more occluded and hence darker than the exposed outer surfaces and becomes darker the deeper inside the tube one goes. Basically, think about how when something is left outside for a long time, dirt collects in the crevices, so to make it look more realistic, we need to put dirt in the crevices. Ah, baking's done. Hey, that looks familiar. Now that you have this funky map, you just slap it on the texture and wait, no, that's not it. Okay, so you create a dirty version of your texture and then mix it with the occlusion map using a mix shader and, okay, fine. So you run the AO map through an overlay with a dirty image and then to the mix shader, fine tuning it with color ramps. I did a few other things like using self fracture to make broken glass and some omission on the lights. So now we have a realistically shaded model and it's time to bring it to life. To do this, we have to give it an armature. Think of it as the human skeleton. Each bone has a joint that it will move on. Then you use something called inverse kinematics to make it so everything behaves properly. Just imagine someone pulls on your foot and your leg will bend to the joint instead of stretching like putty. Finally, you just parent all the objects to the right bones, parent the main control bone to an empty and boom, life. For animation, I just turned on auto keyframes and moved that empty using trackball rotation. After this, you'll have a bunch of keyframes to clean up. Open up the graph editor, which has all the keyframe data. The line just shows how big the positive or negative movement is. To smooth this all out, change the interpolation to linear, smooth keyframes, and change it to Bezier, and that makes it nice and smooth. I just plopped it on a plane with a dirt texture on it, put some fences and pre-made dumpsters. Then I used a particle system and a vertex map to make some grass. To add trash, I took an image of trash and just smooshed it in there. No one will notice, trust me. Then I added an HDRI, which is just a 360 image for some realistic lighting. To animate the camera, I just added a few keyframes for zooms and stuff. For depth of field, I animated an empty and made the camera focus on it with a really low f-stop. See, I told you no one will notice the bad trash. To make some autofocus, you just need to make the empty move away and back. It's a neat trick. To make it change cameras, I just added markers on the timeline and parented them to the camera so it would switch. I rendered it out and it only took like two hours, and then I brought it into Vegas Pro. Added some sound effects I found online, some general ambience. along with some robot noises. Then I did some color correction to really make it pop, and yeah, that's an overview on how this animation was made.